Rock and roll. meeting of the Alumbra Trading Board to order. Today is May 28th, 2015 at 7.01 p.m. We have on the agenda. The first item will be the approval of the agenda. I believe everybody has minute, the minutes for April 23rd. Yes. Uh, or we cast them up. We need to approve those. Then we have a public hearing. Uh, we have a public hearing for the Parker Woods Drive expansion. Then we, we have a pending application, which is the Parker Woods Drive expansion application. Then we have new applications, Ledgewood Meadows subdivision, preliminary subdivision application, and the Love, Lovejoy subdivision, uh, subdivision pre-application. And then we will hear from the planner about all kinds of fun things, I'm sure. So I need a, a motion to approve the agenda. We'll make a motion to approve the agenda. So I mean, second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Anything anybody wants to add? Hearing none, all those in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? Roll call. Next item, thank you very much. Roll call. Tom again. Bob Cunham. Jamie Lowe. Mary Game. John DeKendra. Rich Cunham. Rod Warren. Present. Not present. You have the yes, she is. You have the meeting minutes for April twenty third. discussion on uh, Phil, but it wasn't a lobster company. No, no, that was a that was a residential. Right. Yeah, it's, it's near it. It's near, no, it's up the street. Nowhere near it. Yeah, no, it wasn't a lobster company. No. It was actually the property. Yeah, it was actually yeah. the lobster company does not have residential property. No, I know it's not on the lobster. Any questions? All those in favor? Yes. Uh, 
where you're standing? What? Yeah, I was in here. Okay. Oh, you look lighter than that. Next item. Anyway, I think in Washington, weren't you? Oh, yeah. You were playing. In Washington? Okay. Yes, he did. Yeah, we have a public there. hearing, so I'm going to call a public hearing to order at 7.06. Um, before we get started, I've been asked to read 11. This is from David and Mary Patricia Adams, 213 Downing Road. Uh, it was sent to, to Mr. Chad Redway, the town plan. Date? Date is May 28, 2015. Dear Mr. Redway, two days ago, Tuesday, 26th of May, 2015, I received in the mail a notice of public hearing, a Rundle Planning Board announcing a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Thursday, May 28, 2015, today regarding a proposed private way application to extend Parker Woods Drive. Two days is not a reasonable time to respond since my wife and I have been traveling. For the entire summer of 2014, heavy equipment was operating in the area directly behind our east side property line, suggesting that Mr. Parker was already beginning construction of this project. I went to Town Hall to inquire about the activity, but no one there could answer my questions. I was told that someone would call me back and I never received a call. After notification of the public hearing, I placed a call on Monday, which was not returned. Since the meeting is tonight, I am submitting my concern in writing. My neighbor, Dale Mowry, will be present at the hearing and will offer some comments on the proposed project. I would simply like to refer to the Land Use Ordinance Section 7.7.B.2.E4, which states that discharge of concentrated runoff onto an abutting property shall not be permitted unless a drainage easement is granted by the abutter. My wife and I will not be granting a drainage easement, particularly since this part of the adjoining land is in the 100-year floodplain. Our travels will get us to a rumble on June 11th, and we can be reached at 207-985-3524 from that time. In the meantime, we can always be reached by cell phone at 512-802-5871. Sincerely yours, David C. Adams and Mary Patricia Adams. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to address this? Dale? Uh, do you mind if I don't stand? <clears throat> for, for you, Dave, yeah. Uh, Dale, yeah, that'd be okay. fine. <laughs> I, I'd, let, I'd like to let Mr. Reed speak first. Yeah, I, I, uh, please Does identify yourself. Street. Bruce? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, Bruce Reed, I reside at 220 Downing Road. Uh, I am going to let Dale, this is, I was caught the same way that the letter just indicated the Adams were caught a little bit by surprise. I had no idea. I may not be on the abutter list. Uh, I may not be within the radius that calls for uh, being notified. So I'm here as an interested party across the street. And also, I just want to make sure that the Adams, they are upset about this. <clears throat> They're my neighbors, my friends, and I'm an attorney, as you all know. I just want to register their presence as, their, as an attorney on their behalf. They're here, not only in the letter, but also through me. I will let Dale, as they said in the letter, uh, articulate their uh, specific objections. But I guess from my perspective, I just want to make sure that, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. That, that's the only reason I would stand up and say anything personally. The Adams have some other more specific concerns that Dale can, Dale Mowry can articulate, but it, it did seem, uh, I'll leave it to Tad to explain to the board and to the public what steps were taken to follow the ordinance requirements regarding notice. Certainly the Adams would like to have been at the site walk. I, I, apparently that did occur. Did you have a site walk? Okay. For, the, for the public? Well, there's a requirement in the ordinance that the public be uh, invited. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, honestly, I haven't looked carefully at the ordinance, but I just want to make sure Tad at least explains what was done and uh, so that the Adams can have some comfort that they either were not notified and therefore really should be uh, afforded the opportunity to be there as the most directly affected the butter, or that you did comply with the ordinance. I would just like to have some response from Tad on that issue. Okay. Um, and I guess those are, you know, from, from my perspective, I just wanted to you know, register my uh, presence on behalf of the Adams and uh, make sure that we're 
I know that this is a precursor to building permits coming down the line. That's not before the board at this time. We're curious to know how those building permits run without, if there's not a subdivision plan submitted to this board for approval, obviously we all know the rules. One every five years, we'll have relative exceptions. We just want to make sure the exception, but that, that's a question for Tad and for, for Jim, when and if those uh, building permit applications come up. So. Um, that's all I have to say at the moment. I'll let the uh, you know, I'll just speak. You want to sit here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, my name is Dale Mallory. I live at 227 Downing Road. I received a letter, uh, same one I believe Mr. and Mrs. Adams received. And I received it the same day that they received theirs, two days prior to this meeting. Again, not enough time to assess everything, look things over, make sure things were done properly. So I'd like to um, see if there's a way that we can postpone the vote until the Adams have returned home because they are the true abutters to the property of Mr. and Mrs. Parker. And uh, they have concerns that they would like voiced in front of the planning board in person themselves. Okay. You yourself are not a direct abutter? Direct abutter, no. May I bring, is that it for now? Can I bring up other things? If it's related to, to this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's the only reason I'm here is related yep. to this. Okay. Um, I have more concern questions than I do problems with the uh, project. Um, one of the things I'm uh, concerned about are mostly ecological. Um, when my wife and I bought our home, we were told that we were in a 500-year floodplain. We did not need to have flood insurance. Anyone that's familiar with me knows that we were flooded th three times in nine years. So someone owes me a thousand years. I don't know where that's going to come from, but 1,500 years, and I need to get mine back. <coughs> and I'm worried about future flooding. Uh, we were very lucky this springtime in that we did not have a rain to wash away all that snow that we received in the wintertime. The river did rise. It was into the field in front of my house. I live between, uh, I live on the Kenny Bunk River right next to uh, the West Kenny Bunk, uh, edge of town, the last house in Arundel on Downing Road. So we are greatly affected by this flood. Um, I'm just wondering uh, about future flooding. I'm also uh, concerned about wetlands impact. That's a, uh, an area back in there, it's swampy and marshy. Um, I'm wondering what kind of septic systems are gonna be accepted into this. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, the impact on the Kenny Bunk River. Runoff from the project, runoff from homes, uh, septic leaking, uh, things like that. Uh, one of the reasons my wife moved into that house is because we have just beautiful vistas and uh, the animals are all over and I really would hate to see that disrupted by some sort of spillage or something along that line. Um, I'd like to bring up a couple items uh, in the uh, ordinances that I felt were appropriate. Um, if we go to 7.7B.B .B exceptions, uh, it says on number two, it says, no more than two undeveloped existing lots shall be serviced by an exempted private way constructed or recorded after June 14, 2000. To my knowledge, and according to the letter I received, there were four to seven lots going in there. Uh, I understand that um, these lots can be deeded to families since it's a private way uh, construction. Um, uh, the Parkers I know personally, uh, my children play sports with their children. Uh, they only have three children. Um, where are the other four lots going to go? 
sure who are they going to go to. That's a concern of mine. Um, number three, under the same section, the width of the existing, existing travelway shall be no less than, it says 15, but if you go to the design standards uh, for a three to seven lot or dwelling units, that needs to be 18 feet, not 15. Everybody with me? Okay. Mr. Chairman, may I interject yes. because I, I, I want to make sure this line of questioning um, it is, is um, we have this clarified. I, I think you're in the wrong section. <laughs> okay. Okay, and, and I say that just to save time. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Exempt, no, it's all right. An exempted, just, just as a matter of clarification, an exempted private way is a private way that is given an exemption by, frankly, the staff review committee. Um, and it's a, it's a private way that cannot meet any standards. Cannot meet any it's standards at all. Well, Septic, water, building codes, none of that? Let me finish. Um, it, it, we're dealing with a private way, not a subdivision. Yes, so we're dealing really only so. with the road. Yep. And it's, it's really pertaining to existing private ways that were created over time prior to 2010, quite frankly, that are problem locations where we have houses essentially on them um, and the roads cannot meet the standards uh, and we have lots that are existing that are lots of regular people and they're paying taxes but they can't get a building permit because the road needs to be upgraded in order to, to meet the standards that you're referring to. Okay. Right? Seven, seven okay. It, was all, it was all under the um, exemptions. No, I mean, the title was under, I mean, I was looking at private ways in a state lots, and it was right under that heading. So I assumed it was, um, it qualified as a as something of question that should be answered. That's why I bring that it's up. A, it's a legitimate question, and I just wanted to clarify that that just, that deals, this is a, this is an existing, <coughs> they're upgrading and expanding this road. So okay. they have to meet all the standards that are in the large table that you saw. Okay, now the existing, I'm very sorry. The existing road is covered in asphalt, correct? Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, the new road is going to be directly off of that, correct? It's going to be added to the end of the asphalt and then taken back to where the uh, lots are to be uh, divided up. Well, they're actually reconstructing the entire road. To okay, the they've already been, he's already been doing that. There's been construction going on for that road all spring. Uh, this week there were at least five trucks with Parker uh, on the floor <coughs> that was bringing dirt into his property, not removing it from. And it's all stacked right along where they've cleared a path, which I assume is going to be the road. I'm assuming that that may be a little premature for him to be doing that. Uh, I'm also concerned about the, um, the ability of fire trucks to be able to pass each other. Is that road going to be wide enough for that to take place? And again, with the cul-de-sac that's going to be at the end, are they going to be able to make maneuver around so that they can best serve the community in that area as best as possible? Um, I, the Adams asked me again to bring up the uh, drainage easement. They will definitely not sign an easement for that. Um, and the other thing, um, Mr. Reed brought up earlier about a site visit. Um, if we go to 7.7.B.4A, staff review committee approval process, uh, the next to last sentence says, the review committee shall conduct an on-site public hearing in which members of the public are invited to attend and comment. I was never notified of this, and the Adams were never notified of this. So again, we need to postpone until at least a walkthrough by the public and explanation of how things are going to go should progress. So what the staff review? I'm I'd sorry? Like, I'd like this to was say not that. staff review. This, this was, was not a staff review, review deal. Okay, well, I'm just saying that it says here but that you we need stuff a, that's not in line with 
project. This is not a staff review project. So it was fully reviewed by the planning board process. And the road is not any different because it's a family subdivision. The road is meeting the same standards as any subdivision. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about the standards. I'm talking about that you're already excavating the, the, the road and you don't even have approval from the planning board to do anything. I've been operating as an excavation contractor in the town of Rundle for almost 20 years. And I've been stockpiling material at that property for almost 20 years. I have loom there, I have some gravel there, and you mentioned five trucks with Parker's name on I own one dump truck. Okay, well it's been part of it's been coming with a full load of dirt at least four to five times a day going oh, into so your that property. Must, that, must, that must be the same truck that brings you free wood, Dale. Excuse me. Um, I'm, I'm not here to tell the planning board how to do your job. My experience with public hearings is the applicant. I, ask, I honestly don't know. I don't know what you're doing. I, I, this is a public hearing. I was expecting to have the applicant, and again, this is however you want to run your show is fine, but I just want to hear what is being proposed. I, I would like the applicant to just tell us how, how wide's the road, how far is it going, what's the drainage. Is Bill here? Uh, is he going to present for you, or are you going to? No, I'll present. It. Okay. I mean, I just, okay. he hasn't had a chance to present, and it's hard to. I just would like to know what he's doing. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. well hang, hang on just for a minute. I, I, I need to address something there. All right. You did quote the staff review committee report. Yes. You did quote the staff review committee process. Yes. But if you look at the next page at B4B, it talks about the planning board review. This comes to the planning board review. If it were a staff review process, we wouldn't be having this hearing. All right, under the planning board review, it states that within 30 days of receiving a complete private way application, the planning board shall conduct a site walk and a public hearing in which members of the public are invited to attend and comment. Um, again, I only got two days notice on this. This site walk was approved back on April 23rd, I believe. That's true, the first, the first one did not exist. But there was actually two site walks. Yes, there, there were. There, the there was a site walk that was scheduled in early April that not enough people showed up. On April 23rd, we scheduled another one. We had the site walk, we had, and there was plenty of notice. There's notice put up on the town website. There's notice posted at town hall. I don't know, and, and we'd have to ask Mr. Redley to address the process of, of how those notices go up. Okay, because the Adams nor I were notified of this public uh, walk, and they especially should have been notified because they are the abutters to the property. And again, I think this needs to be postponed until they are here in the area so that they can voice their opinions and see exactly what's going on. They're very, very concerned about this. And I think at this point, I'm going to ask the town planner to explain the process of notifying the public about the hearings and how they work, because, because that issue has come up. You've asked it. Mr. Reed has asked it. We defer the lawyers to public. Through the chair. Uh, the public hearing process um, is twofold. To have an official public hearing by the planning board, we notify uh, all of the abutters who are those within 500 feet, which is why you got a notice. Mm -hmm. um, so technically, you're an abutter. Bruce, just missed it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's basically it's uh, 500 feet. We notify them a week in advance. We also put a uh, and that's a notice that you did receive. In the, uh, I did receive it. And uh, we also do a, a, a notice in the uh, newspaper, in the Journal Tribune. Um, don't read that paper. What? Well, I don't read, I don't read papers around here, they're not good. That is, uh, but that, that is our legal requirement okay. to post um, seven days, we do ten, just to be sure, because we're never sure if it's going to okay, But I never received notice of this public walkthrough. And you wouldn't, because we don't. Well, the Adams, notices the Adams did not either, and they're the true abutters. They should definitely have been contacted about this. But we don't do that as for a sidewalk. We do that for a public hearing. Well, it says it was a public. It's a public hearing. 
official public hearing, which we're having right now, that's what we notify notify about this. But when we have a site walk and the public can come and comment at the planning board level, that is advertised in on the town website. Okay. Well, it's did, no different than a meeting. Yeah. So did the staff review committee have this on site public? This is not being reviewed by the staff review. Okay, I'm just I'm I'm understood. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm completely novice in this. I'm just here as well, a we have this two citizen. levels we have two levels of review. We have staff level uh, which is basically the myself, the code enforcement officer, the public works director, and the fire chief. And we do that for applications involving private ways involving less than two lots. Mm -hmm. This is an application that quite frankly involves more than two lots, so it automatically got kicked up to the planning board. Yes. And because the, the applicant's also looking at potential family division um, or exempted division at some future date. Um, it's clearly, it's in his best interest to, to do it at this level, otherwise he has to go back and rebuild. So uh, that's why he's doing a, uh, a subdivision for not to assume. Yeah, that see, word. there's no, that's that word again. No, it's, this is strictly a private way because the applicant is not asking for any lots that would be approvable by the planning board. Under state law, there are certain, the, the, the legislature has provided exemptions, um, which Bruce alluded to. And that is the exemptions for transfer of property to uh, individual lots to yes. blood relatives. Yeah, I do understand that. And also uh, um, being able to carve out a lot from the main lot every five years. One, one carve out every five years. Or in the event of probate or a ruling by, by the courts to divide land. Now, as I understand you, then they don't have to have an approved septic system by the no. town? They could just dump it right into the Kenny Bunk River. No. Um, well, I mean, if they don't have a, uh, they don't have to have an approved septic system. Where is it going to go? Well, they do have to have an approved septic system. But that's not uh, dealt with by this board. It's dealt with by both the state and the code enforcement officer in the town of Warren. Okay. What each individual septic system will have to be done is they'll have to receive an HHE two, uh, two hundred basically from. Um, and that will be prepared by a licensed site evaluator who's licensed in the state. Mm -hmm. it's, sent in, it's given to the code enforcement officer and sent off after he reviews it, sent off also to the state. Okay. Open uh, human engineer. And so that's where that's covered for each individual law. Okay. Right. Again, I'm just concerned about the, uh, the ecological concerns there because it's all, it's, there's quite a bit of marshland, there's quite a bit of wetlands there. You have the Kenny Bunk going right past, what I believe, where the cul-de-sac and one of the homes is going, or one of the two of the homes are going to be. You know, I think there's going to be some sort of impact on the river by having those lots in that general area. Um, and that is something that, frankly speaking, uh, if they proceed to give it to blood relatives or carve it out every five years, it, it is not going to be reviewed by this planning board. It will be reviewed by the code enforcement officer when those lots are done. Okay. And uh, also the, the uh, septic systems will be reviewed by both the state and, and the local code enforcement officer. Okay. Uh, in regards to other issues, no, there will not be a review. But that's the exemption that the legislature has provided the property owners who proceed to, to do some additions that the other way. Because they are proceeding that way and they're not proposing any lots at this point, this board is limited its uh, review to strictly the private way. Okay, I'd like to address that then. Has there been um, has there been permission given by the code enforcement officer to allow Mr. Parker to pre-dig his road? I can't speak to that. I don't know. Okay, well that's a, to me that's a major issue. He's already started like he thinks he's already got it in his pocket. You know, I mean, it's, to me, it's a road. It looks just like a road. It goes back behind some pine trees. It's going to come out by a deer stand that he built, uh, where the cul-de-sac's going to be. I mean, there's trucks bringing in dirt. They're not taking dirt out. So, you know, he may be excavating on his own property, but it looks like he's excavating the road right now. And I think that's a big concern. There has been a road in there since before I bought the property deal. It was, as you know, that was an old farm. 
there was an old road on site that it showed on the site plan if you would have reviewed it. I did. An existing road and a proposed road. Yes. And there's one on the right and there's one on the left. Yep. And we had permission earlier in the year to re-ditch a ditch line for a culvert that was washed out. And we've actually been removing the old road and looming and seeding it in terms of putting in the new road when it gets approved. So we have less than so many acres exposed at one time, which is DEP rules and regulations. Okay. I still think he's already started construction, and I don't think he's got the approval to do that. That's my opinion, and from what I've seen. Okay. And I think that's, that's about... Um, I think that was all I had. I thank you very much to the board for allowing me time to uh, express my opinion and my concerns. Again, I'm not against the project. I just have questions and concern about how things are going to progress. Thank you all very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Troy? And again, Dale, I just want to explain it's a Mr. Reed, this project, um, even though we keep talking about it as a family subdivision, it's still... Uh, it's not a subdivision. It's it, it, Okay, I'm talking right now. But, um, it still had to meet all the same requirements. One of the requirements in town right now is you you can't have lots of four acres. Um, you can't have what now? I'm sorry. I you can't have, have any large lots. Large no, lots. It just needs to be closer. over. What I mean, what's considered a large lot? You can't have a five-acre lot. Okay. I did not. By subdivision standards in the town of Rondon. Okay. They're in the works of maybe possibly changing that. I didn't want one-acre lots. I don't think anyone in our neighborhood has a one-acre lot. Maybe other than you. And my project is downhill of you. We had to map out in 01 when I put it put in the first house lot. There was no 100-year flood zone mapped out for the USGS. I had to hire an engineer to do that. Both sides of the turnpike, 1,500 feet, because there was no state data. We did that, which included your property up past down the road. Your property is in a flood zone, which means your septic system is being washed into the river. My lots will not, they are not in the 100 year flood zone, and it was done by an engineer. They're up on high ground, probably 30 feet higher than your house. It's all engineered, there was no state data. Town of Arundel made me engineer it, the first lot that I put in. So, as far as environmentally goes, I will not be impacting the Kennebunk River. We'll meet all state and local codes and regulations your septic system has been flooded, as you mentioned, five times in the past no, 10 years. No, my septic system has not. So that means your septic does not, go in the river. My Mine septic system has not been flooded. My house has been flooded. My septic system is a... Your house gets a, flooded, and my septic head. system's underground. I guess your septic was would too. My septic is a tank that I pump out every two years. Not just a tank, it's a bed. Well, You most, can't have just a tank. They haven't done that in years. Excuse me? They haven't pumped my pump, my pump out. No, they everyone pumped. has a septic system, not yeah. just a tank. Well, it's it's been pumped out last year. Don't tell me it hasn't been pumped out. I have Mr. Ness come and pump it so out every year. So we're talking about the tank. Okay, your your waste fluids go in the ground. Yes, and the ground and takes care of them, and they go in the river. I'm not know. in the hundred year flood zone. I paid to have it mapped out. Um, and these lots will not be in the 100 year flood zone. Well, are there FEMA maps available that says what the flood plans I, and I just told you, I so paid to have an engineer map out 1,500 feet both sides of the main turnpike. That's not my question. Because there was no federal data. We actually paid to have it done and mapped it. I was so under the assumption that FEMA had maps of that area, they just had not been updated to this year. That's what I was told. I hope FEMA maps are notoriously inaccurate. Okay, I'm just so saying, like I said, when I bought my house in 97, 98, we were told it was a 500 year flood plain and we did not have to have flood insurance. So FEMA maps generally, as I said, are notoriously inaccurate and we often have actual engineers do uh, 
field studies to actually pinpoint where those blood planes are. Okay. Sometimes they match up and time they don't. Okay. Well, I know the USGS has set up a monitoring station at the bridge on the Arundel side, and they've been monitoring uh, the rise and flow of the river for at least three years, I believe, maybe, maybe four. Um, so there's federal involvement right there. They should have information about flooding and, and whatnot. If they're, they're there maybe once every three months, and it's got a, uh, a solar hookup to it so they can download the information as need be. You know, so as far as I'm concerned, the, the federal government does have information about that. Mr. the chair, I yes. may address that. Um, yes, you're right, the federal government does. The current federal maps that we're using, are, as Mr. DeKinnon states, are very <coughs> inaccurate. The federal government has, and FEMA has in fact gone through and they have remapped um, what we call the zone A's, which don't have much data, that's why they're notoriously inaccurate. Um, and that was what caused such a fury in Kennebunk, uh, Arundel, Lyman, Kennebunk Port, was because the calculations also included a, a, um, an assumption of a three, three foot sea level rise over the next 100 years. So you can imagine that the amount of floodplains increased significantly in, in many areas, and properties that currently were not in the floodplain were now uh, designated as being in. 100 year flood plan. That caused enough of a storm that the federal government withdrew the maps for a period of time and uh, they're under review and in fact they're, I believe the comment period has ended for that and they will be publishing those new maps which I'm not sure how much more accurate they are but they're certainly more uh, enforceable by FEMA. Okay, let's put it that way. So right now the, the new maps are available online. They're just not enforceable at this time. They have not been adopted by FEMA. Um, is there a normal time frame that exists between the end of the comments and when they uh, approve the uh, the maps? I mean, you probably don't. Theoretically, know, but I mean, yes, but that doesn't. It's happen. not. Yeah, it's not public knowledge. Uh, well, it's when they. Yeah, I, I believe the comment period is closed. Yes, and so. How long it takes them to integrate those comments into the mapping? There's there's no statutory requirement for them to re, to respond in a certain period of time. So it could be next year, it could be tomorrow, it could be ten years from now. No okay. Okay. Would you like uh, Mr. Parker to make a presentation? About oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. If you could explain to everybody what's going on. Well, it's, um, as you know, there's an existing road with two locks on it right now, and it's going to continue into the backfield and follow an old farm road that was there and veer off in a few places. And it's, um, I'm doing it purposely right now for one of my sons is ready to build now, and the other ones, when they get ready, but and it doesn't have to be just your children, it can be their children, or your brothers, sisters, or whoever. But um, primarily, I bought 50 acres so that I could give a few acres to my children. Uh, and that's what this project is doing. Instead of doing it five different times, every time one wants a lot, I'm doing it once, and building a road that meets town standards Instead of piecemealing it together, we're going to do the whole thing in one shot. Do you have a plan with you? Um, I do not have a plan with me, Bruce, but my uh, dad does. Dad does. <laughs> it's a full we have, we have engineered plan. By me. And the board did have some questions. Runoff was a, a concern. And the board did have some questions for you as to runoff calculations. And we asked you to look closely at them. And if I recall, the calculation showed no peak runoff. That's right. right. Well, it showed, it showed no zero. net, no net yeah. increase. Zero, in the zero increase, right. And that was all done by engineers. Uh, the whole project has been, has been engineered just like any other project in the town would be. Uh, it's actually going to be quite a road for, right now for one house lot. 
um, but that's what needs to be done by these standards. But yeah, just but, to get back to your concern, the board is as concerned as our people here in town with runoff and where it goes and what it does. So we're all looking on top of that. And that's the first thing is we ask for people. Very good. Very let's, good. Let's put it this way: this road that's being built will be the best road in town. That's kind of scary. Still having us build a few of them. So when you come to the parents, they'll get involved. I think what he means is he'll probably have more gravel under than most town roads. All right. I'm sorry, that's Larry. Is the new stand is very stringent. It's way too feet wide, too feet gravel. I mean. And you're paving it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think for all of the I public, have, it's, I it's, a great presentation. It's very, it's a, it's very important for everybody to you know, comment because obviously you're all concerned. Yeah. This has come before hey, the board. The we have, I think, uh, here, done our due diligence in it. But we're talking about the road. And a lot of the, the, the road like runoff was going to be created with that. Where potentially lots of the, that all had to be redone as well. And I think they had to reduce the proposed number of where they could go because of some of the sightings and that kind of stuff. So what we're dealing with is really them building a road at this time. Which they've already and, started. And Ed, you can deal with, you can deal with that. I'm at her. Okay. That's, um, that's a code enforcement issue if it is an issue. Okay. That is not the board's issue. Okay. I think what I'm trying to tell you, Neil, that we've been required by this board to meet all the same standards as far as erosion and sedimentation control as any other project and as the standards require in the town room. And beyond. Uh, yeah, this is, this is down the road right here. So I can, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I was talking with uh, the town planner yesterday and he was explaining that to me. No, I'm, I would hope not. I'll take him back control. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, what we have here is this is down the road, give an explanation. <coughs> Troy, if you want me to do it, I don't have to do it. You're doing no good. <laughs> uh, this is the Downing Road area here. This is the existing road. Now, this road is being realigned from it uh, originally. This was approved in 2006, 2009, and 2008. I think it had several revisions. But the road up to about here was actually to about here was approved. Yep. As a three lot vision. One, two, and then remainder land. Lot three, which is the Parker home, actually has access from down the road. But it also enjoys access from this as well, but its principal access is from here. So it's actually, right now, two lots and remainder. Uh, they're going to extend this all the way out to near the end of the property. This is the path and the thread of Kennebunk River. Cul-de-sac, main turnpike, Dotted line is the 100 meter foot line. Pretty close. Yeah, but uh, yeah, building yeah, windows here, close. building window here, building windows here, all on this side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, they've done, it's relatively level, uh, but they've done planar profiles in here. In fact, this section of it has to be redone not only because of width, but also because of uh, gradient. It was actually wrapped too flat. And so they have to do basically the same thing you've seen in the main turnpike, where they raise it and lower it in order to get basically the, uh, the lateral gradient necessary in order to <coughs> it so it shouldn't it drains properly. Um, uh, and also the, uh, the, the runoff from here, there is no need for a detention facility at this point. There's an existing culvert, I believe, right about here. Yeah, existing culvert right there. Um, and there is no peak increase in the, the amount of peak runoff that will be generated by this what, what do you mean by peak runoff? I don't understand that. Peak term. runoff is, is a time of concentration when uh, runoff, it, it, it goes by the theory that a drop of water in this watershed mm -hmm. and a drop of water in this watershed will come together in, at a certain time and 
create the most amount of runoff or the greatest amount of runoff that I'm getting reviewed by a seat. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly right. The professional it's engineer tough. over here is it's smiling tough. at me because he knows I'm messing it up. But, uh, Jamie, did you want to take it? Theoretically, it's when the entire watershed is contributing runoff to a certain point. And that's where, that's where Ted gets into the time of concentration standpoint. Yeah. So what happens is when they, you look at a peak runoff, it's when the whole, the whole watershed or, or drainage area, however you want to describe it, is contributing into runoff at, a, at your study point, which can be wherever you choose to, to discharge or where it naturally discharges uh, stormwater. So in this case, that's a color. There's a culvert, there's an existing culvert yeah. there now. Or existing swale or anything. Let's, 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 put, it well let's put it this way, we're not playing Houston. It's, we're it's what? not playing Houston. I would hope not. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know what they got. I, I know exactly what they got. I've been flooded three times. So I know what it's like. When, it's, when we say no, no increase in peak runoff, that what we mean is that it's not going to be any different from what it is now after it's built. So you're going to have the same runoff pretty much ending up in the same place. You're not going to increase, you're not going to concentrate it anywhere. And Bill Walsh, has he he's done those calcs? Yes, those yes. calculations yeah. are all on file. Yeah. And they're, they're in the application. Yeah. Yes, and we did specifically ask for those calculations. Great. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, well, we're very concerned with that. Yeah, I'm very concerned too. Uh, do we need, do we have more for the public hearing? I don't know. Is there anybody else that has any questions or comments? I'm not hearing none, then I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.48. We'll move right into our agenda. And the first item on the agenda is the Parker Woods Drive Expansion Private Way Application, a proposal to extend Park Wood, Parker Woods Drive <coughs> 1,300 linear feet and make improvements to the entire length of the private way to meet the construction standards for a road servicing three to seven residential lots on a 40.4 acre site located at 183 Downing Road, Tax map 26, lots 3 and 3C in the R4 Shoreland Overland and the NRC Zoning District. Troy Parker is the owner and William Walsh III is the owner's agent. Is that right? That's right. Okay. For some reason, I thought Paul was your agent. <laughs> he's he has been he's he everybody has else's agent. times. <laughs> okay. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Parker? No, I am, I, I'm not sure of Mr. Parker, but I, I, a lot of discussion went on about a lot of different things. And that, but the board has pretty well dealt with a lot of the comments, but there's a couple that I, I, I think we should at least discuss. Okay. Ted commented that the notification for the site walk went out 10 days or our uh, rule said seven we heard we heard from the public that they didn't receive it until two days ago but we also heard that they've been traveling so i don't know if it's because they were traveling and no, it was in no, there they, they have been wrong. public I'm hearing is done i'm sorry and i'm sorry for being abrupt but there's a, okay. there's a lot of information to go so that was kind of on my mind. Um, the idea of kind of postponing a vote, something that I think the board um, should at least discuss uh, and moving on. As far as the floodplain, the runoff, the wetland impact, those studies have been done, have been submitted. Septic is when there's going to be something built, there isn't now. The impact on the Kennebunk River, like, again, based on the septic and the, the, the sites, we have that kind of data. The standards, as Mr. Parker said in his other applications, is they've not 
all of uh, travel way, their, their proposal meets all of the travel way requirements for this sort of um, division. Construction of a road. Um, and then the third item, I think, and potentially that fourth item, uh, the idea of the fire truck having to pass each other and the cul-de-sac, those designs are in place with uh, not only our apparatus, and you can comment to it, but even a larger one to assure uh, that that sort of thing can take place. Um, as far as the construction work that uh, had been indicated that there's been construction work going on. It's also been indicated from the uh, applicant that actually it's some of the stockpiles that have been there forever. I would just say that someone commented, and I forgot that really a code enforcement kind of action, not a, not a board action. So, and try, I'm sorry to delay getting right into your thing. So, go ahead. Um, two items really that, that um, Pat, I, I think your notification, do we know when that was mailed that to? Yeah, the postmark was the 21st. Uh, no, the, uh, the, mark, the postmark was the week before this one, which was on the 21st. Yeah. Okay. The week before this week. That's correct. And the newspaper advertisement actually went out on Monday. And it's been, and, and Marie, that did go right into the website. The, the video. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> as far as the notification requirement. Yeah, yeah, and those are notification requirements. Yeah, yeah, if, if the notification was mailed, the, the problem with the notification this time is that we had a holiday so which screwed right. everything up. Okay. Well, that's it. I have a lot of same thoughts and block heads, so I won't go through them all. Um, the only thing that I think we need to be careful about is the site walk, whether the, um, the public notices went out to everybody. I, I never made that. Did anybody mm -hmm. tell me how many, how many from the public, the public did attend? With, with, was there anybody? Nobody was there. Nobody, no, there was nobody. nobody from we had two different sidewalks. Two sidewalks. Yeah. So, I mean, it so, wasn't like... But, well, what I was hoping is someone showed up, so which would have meant it. Yeah. No. Well, Tom, let me ask you this. The majority of the time, how much of the public do we have at a sidewalk? Um, I don't know that'll happen. Well, in this case, it may have been... No, I'm just saying, in generally speaking. Um, okay, so this is my concern is that, um, that we don't want to get into legal trouble. And I, can't, um, sorry, I don't mean to get in your way, because I think you've done it great job. I will say to Dale that, that um, what he's done, we had a lot of discussion on, on uh, what was acceptable. In most cases, he was going beyond what, what we were required. Right. So, uh, so I think it's going to be a well done uh, development. But, um, but the concern I have is, is about the uh, site walk, whether it's notification. That, that you said notification doesn't have to go out. What we normally don't send a notification for a cyclone. When you say notification, let's let's get a term well, straight here. Before you answer, let me just say it is the, what the, the wording is that the public are invited to attend the comment. And it's the word invited. Yeah. Uh, maybe we're thinking they're welcome to attend, but invited it means you you send out uh, an invitation. So no. <laughs> they're welcome to attend just like they're any public well, it's a public meeting is what it is. Well, is welcome it? to attend and invited to attend could be... It's like anybody in town could come to this meeting tonight. Yeah, that's right. It's advertised. They're, they're welcome, but we don't... We do you advertise it. it. Well, is it's, there a, it's all advertised, and it's posted, and it's on, and it's on the bulletin board. Yeah, the website. Is it, it sufficient? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, okay. so that, well, that, that's my only thing I think we've got to be careful about is legally, I don't want this to get kicked back 
where um, it was not avoided because of some uh, misstep. Well, let me ask you, Tom, is in, you're looking at the ordinance, does it, what procedure does it have for notifying the butters for sidewalk? It says they are to be, they are invited to attend. Who is it, the butters are invited to attend? Um, the public's invited to attend. Which members of the public are invited to attend? The public, the public are invited to attend. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not talking about the abundance, it says the public. The only thing I guess to maybe put ahead to some of these questions, maybe Tad can answer this quickly. Have I met all the requirements of the town and have all the advertisements and hearings been legal to this point? Yes. Two. And that's not you, that's me. Right. <laughs> yes, we are we have made all our notifications in as the ordinance requires us to do. Um, the ordinance doesn't require us to post on the town website. We found the website to be actually one of our more effective ones, especially for people who live out of state or out of town or out of, or, or out of, uh, or out of town for that particular moment. Of course, I, I'm sure that many people don't visit the town website on a regular basis and see what's happening in the planning board. It's not really, Good, well, it's good drama, but it's not really good entertainment. Um, so I, we, we probably don't get as, as many of the public visiting to find out what's happening either at the planning board and the zoning board of appeals or the selectmen as we would like. And, and uh, the only time these things come up is when we have a, a project. Uh, if the board ever wants to entertain a more thorough method of, of, of notification, certainly we can do that. But right now we have basically the newspaper, the the website and the posting on the, on the, on the boards that, that we do. Uh, and we also, of course, also have our, uh, our uh, email notifications, which we unfortunately have not been able to get up, but now they're up and running again. Um, those technical difficulties have been resolved. So we're, we're trying just about every every method, except for notifying the letters prior to the public. <coughs> That's the only thing that we the only, the only time we actually make mailings to individual property owners is prior to the public hearing. Point of order? Technically, also, the fact is, this is actually the second, per se, public hearing because the first one did not cover enough time to actually have a public hearing. So that's why it is presently <coughs> tonight. But it wasn't actually scheduled as a public hearing. It, it was, was scheduled by us, but it was never right. posted. That's so that's good. why it was good. never, because it was not held as a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, I think this project has been thoroughly reviewed by the board, and I feel very comfortable with it. I also feel that we have met as a board of a town all of the legal obligations. That being said, I'm not happy with the notification. Two days doesn't, you know, doesn't seem right to me, and I think we need to address that as a board going forward. But as to our current ordinance, we have met the requirements. And if there were any question in my mind as to the, uh, the project itself or any aspect of it, I would say, you know, we probably should postpone it, but I'm extremely comfortable with this project. Mr. Parker has, uh, Mr. Troy has done, Mr. Parker has, has done, as Thomas said, a, a, an excellent job as far as engineering. He's gone above and beyond most of the requirements, which is why I feel so comfortable with it. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with going forward, but I would like the board to make a note that we should review the notice requirement. I don't think it's adequate. Okay. I would concur with John with that. Mm -hmm. To the point of Potentially discussing it if we have time for minutes later this meeting while it's fresh on everybody's mind. I'm not sure. I understand. I, I, I agree. I'd like to be able to discuss that issue. Do you have anything else, Jim? Um, I was not able to attend the, I guess, the second of the two meetings. But based on Tad's review memo, um, I trust that the the provisions and the questions that we asked about the stormwater management were adequately satisfied by the engineer. Yeah, um, I have this letter here. If you'd like to read it. Do you want to recap? 
7B7, we have to determine the type of surety we want. Do we want, uh, we can have either a construction surety or an engineer's certification. So we, we need to address that issue. Do we want financial or will we settle for something from this, that's certified? The, the other thing that we need to have is the maintenance agreement. Do we have that yet? Oh, no, that's a provision that is in the, would be in the findings of fact that they cannot get COs until such time as those maintenance agreements are filed. They have to be filed with okay. the deeds. Okay. So far, there's no deed. So uh, when, when, when and if lots are created, the maintenance agreement is assigned to, is basically attached to whatever property is there. Um, the format would be great, but they're all pretty standard maintenance agreements based on the um, lots. Bryce Ingraham is my attorney who draws up the road maintenance agreements and um, he's aware that it's going to happen and we're going to draw one up. It's going to be based upon the number of lots with equal share to road maintenance rights, which I can do okay. you know, relatively quickly. And Skillings and Shaw is my bonding agent and I have a letter here and it's through a fax and it didn't come out very well, but I've been bonding projects with them for 25 years and the letter pretty much says that they are um, that a customer I've been a customer there and so they're going to bond this project and I mean we used to do DOT work and you have to put up a bond when you do DOT work I'm more than willing to just bond the project which a lot of people don't in this case but I am bondable and I'm willing to bond the project so. Yeah, and that was going to be my comment by, by our performance guarantees and by history of the board. This, this section, as was alluded to by the town planner, is kind of a little off, but it is the applicant that determines which one of those, and there's four different types, that they, they can choose. Right. The board, if it has any conditions of the surety other than what is mentioned under 13.1 uh, and 13.2 for the for the content, um, then the board kind of gets involved. But by by history, and as as Ted has said, once once the applicant has has determined how he wants to, and it looks like he's choosing 13.1 point B uh, performance bond. And, Troy under uh, 13 month, you can get those provision exactly what has to, what the contents have to be in there. Um, the board has in the past um, been able to go through, do approval. It's supposed to be part of, this says it's part of the submission application, but since the board is involved, you can't file <coughs> approval and, and and then tell you the, what the condition is. Right? So, so uh, it's just, it's another area that we need to, we need to address. I wanted to make sure that that, that, that got touched on, because there's a couple of points there. Yeah. So, to the chair? Yes. Um, just, just a point uh, to note that the 77B process has its own bonding requirements. That's separate from 13. I appreciate you looking at 13, but 13 is for subdivision road. <coughs> and this is for Wait, a, this is uh, a private way. This is a private way. Good. You love saying bonding is fine. It's, it, yeah, it, there's two, there's two options for more engineering certification or financial sure. Right. And, and, and it is up to the outside. It's, it's the bond. Any one of the other four arts, which would have been fine with the board. I mean, any one of the four you guys, you guys picked. And the details are generally worked out between the applicant and for for the amount once you have the cost 
you, and usually in most of the cities and states that you work with for road building, they would prefer 100% sharing mode. Uh, well, 77B seven, seven, seven says it's a 100% it's a of the road cost plus 10%. Some towns are, some towns are the project cost, some towns go 110%. Yeah, ours is 110 110%. 110%. Okay. That's why I, I do not have anything else. <laughs> does, does the board have anything else uh, for the applicant? <coughs> So with I, I no, there are, those two things are outstanding. The surety or the bonding not, which you guys will do. So that should be a condition for approval. The maintenance agreement itself. The wording can actually be <laughs> bound into that bond. But you don't, need, not a, at all you don't well, need a maintenance agreement until you actually sell or right, transfer yeah, a lot. Right. But, but, yeah. presently, but presently there is a maintenance agreement on the two lots already coming in on the park and road, is it correct? Right. So there is already... It'll have to be rewritten. Yeah. Correct. But Even shared no yeah. law. I would, I would suggest that a, that a template maintenance agreement be provided to staff as a, as a condition of approval. They're pretty much more boilerplate. Right. They use in every town, road maintenance right. agreement. Five lots, five equal shares. Yep. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, pretty simple. Yeah, I can have that done within a few days. Okay, so yeah, so the most important thing is filing. Right. It has to be recorded with the subdivision plan once it's approved. Well, 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 this, this, by the way, is going to be filed separately. Yep, but they, within 90 days. They also reference the subdivision plan as approval in the road maintenance agreement. The lawyer always references that. So if someone goes to the registry of deeds, they can see it and find it. Right. Then as a lot is added, as you get it off, that's put into the registry of deeds under that particular land lot. It's amended. And as long as it's once every five years, the family is exempted, you haven't created this. Um, having, having digested all that, I'd like to make a motion we proceed to the findings of fact. A second. Yes. Motion's been made yep. to yep. go to findings of fact. Any discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Assuming that's your name. Okay. Whereas on April 9th, 2015, the Arundel Planning Board did receive a private way permit application from Troy Parker to upgrade and extend Parker Woods Drive, 1,300 linear feet, and make improvements to the entire length of the private way to meet the construction standards for a road servicing three to seven residential lots on a 40.4 acre site located at 183 Downing Road, tax map 26, lots 3 and 3C in the R4 Shoreland overlay and the NRC zoning districts. Troy Parker is the owner and William Walsh III PE is the owner's agent. Whereas on April 23rd, the Arundel Planning Board conducted a public site walk to inspect the proposed site in conformance with the provisions of section 77B4B of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. Whereas on May 28, 2015, the Arundel Planning Board conducted a public hearing in accordance with the provisions of Section 77B4B of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. Whereupon, the Arundel Planning Board has given due consideration of the applicant's private way application and has arrived at the following findings and conclusions. Findings of fact, number one. The applicant and owner of the existing Parker Woods Road is Troy and Lisa Parker. Number two, the property is located at 183 Downing Road and is identified as a Rundle Assessor's Map 14, Lot 3C, and is located in the R4 Shoreland Overlay and the NRC Zoning Districts. Number three, Parker Woods Drive currently serves two dwelling units on Lots Lots Map 25 3A, 3B, <coughs> and the remaining land of Troy and Lisa Parker located on Lot 3C. Lot 3 also accesses Parker Woods Road from the rear, but maintains its principal access from Downing Road. Number four, Parker Woods Drive was originally approved as a minor subdivision and private way serving two lots and the remainder land in 2003 with subsequent revisions in 2006 and 2009. 
the applicant proposes to reconstruct the existing portion of the road approved by the Arundel Planning Board in 2009 to the minimum standard cross section of 18 feet in travel width with three foot gravel shoulders in conjunction with the new for with the new for a private way board. Yeah. The, the wording for me for a bit there. With the new requirements for a private way serving three to seven lots as specified under section 77B2A of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. Number five, the portion of the existing road designated for reconstruction, the Arundel Planning Board has granted at its May 15, 2015 meeting a waiver to permit the pre-2014 standard MDOT Type D gravel to remain in place and be supplemented with current standards for MDOT Type D 703.06B to meet the 18 inch base course depth where required. Number six, in addition, the applicant is proposing to exceed road construction standards of 77B2A by installing a three and a half to three and a quarter bituminous concrete pavement. <coughs> Number seven, the applicant is providing a standard cul-de-sac terminus at the, at the terminus of the proposed road extension. Number eight, in support of this application, the applicant has submitted horizontal and vertical plans and profiles, details, and soil erosion control plans <coughs> of the private way improvements entitled Parker Woods Drive Private Way Plan for, Tri for Troy Parker as prepared by Walsh Engineering Associates Incorporated dated May tw March 26, 2015 with revisions. In addition, Walsh Engineering Associates Incorporated has provided pre- and post-development hydrocad stormwater analysis and stormwater management plan dated March 26, 2015, with revisions to May 4, 2015, documenting no net increase in peak runoff rates for a 25-year frequency storm generated by the proposed road improvements. Conformance with conditional use criteria. After due review and consideration, the Arundel Staff Review Committee has determined the application to be in conformance with, with all criteria of Section 77B of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. Did that not say staff? Arundel Planning Board? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. This is not staff. After due review and consideration, the Arundel Planning Board has determined the application to be in conformance with all criteria of Section 77B of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance in that one, the proposed road reconstruction and extension meets all horizontal and vertical alignment standards of Section 77B2A, 77B2B, 77B2C, and 77B2D. The proposed road reconstruction and extension meets and exceeds the typical road cross-section mandated under Section 77B2A. Number three, the proposed stormwater management plan meets and exceeds the minimum drainage standards of section 77B2E. Number four, the applicant's sediment and erosion control plan meets the standards of section 77B2F. Therefore, be it resolved that based on the above findings and conclusions, the Arundel Planning Board hereby approves private way permit application of Troy Parker to upgrade and extend Parker Woods Drive 1300 linear feet and make improvements to the entire length of the private way to meet construction standards for a road servicing three to seven residential lots on a 40.4 acre site located at 183 Downing Road, tax map 26, lots three and three C <coughs> in the R4 shoreland overlay and the NRC zoning districts subject to the following conditions. Number one, prior to construction of the private way improvements or the issuance of a building permit on lot three C, the applicant shall post a performance bond with the town of Arundel in the amount approved by the town planner. 10% contingency shall be withheld for 60 days after completion of the improvements to ensure that all work has been completed in conformance with the drawing and design standards. Number two, prior to the issuance of any certificate of occupancy on lot 3C or any other subdivision of 3C thereof, the applicant shall submit to the code enforcement officer a sealed certification from Walsh Engineering Associates Incorporated that all proposed road improvements depicted on the approved plans have been constructed in accordance to that plan 
and the construction standards of Section 77BA of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. Number three, within 90 days of the signing of the record mylar by the planning board, the applicant shall record the approved private way plan in the York County Registry of Deeds along with deed revisions to Lot 3C to create a 50-foot wide right-of-way for Parker Woods Drive and a revised maintenance agreement for all properties served by Parker Woods Drive. Number four, prior to the issuance of any certificate of occupancies on Lot 3C or any subdivision thereof, the applicant shall submit to the code enforcement officer a copy of the filing of a revised maintenance agreement for Parker Woods Drive which includes the proposed Lot 3C as a responsible party. So approved by the Arundel Planning Board this 28th day of May, 2015. Move to approve. A second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes, Martin. Uh, according to this, the first issue of surety that you have brought up, this is already addressed as an answer. And a certified engineering instead of surety it of is. a, a posted bond. Right, you kind of got them both in there, what you're yeah. saying, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you just put up the bond? The bond is, uh, that's what it's there for, to guarantee completion of the Yeah, but, but what we do is we, we want the engineer to certify that the work has been done correctly. I'm not going out there. I can't sit out there. I can't, I can't make a such a project. I don't have enough staff to do that. Be, um, I think you would put pavement in there too. Yeah. It's not, I'm not required to pave the whole road immediately. Your plan shows pavement for the whole thing. The whole thing? I don't know. The the whole, well, well it, it shows pavement because that's what your road state design calls for. 15 inches, 3 inches, and 3 inches is your road standards. But it doesn't, your road standards doesn't say it has to be paved. Saying if it is paved, it's 15, 3, and 3. That's that's what your ordinance states. It's 15 right. inches base, 3 inches across, 3 inches pavement. That's why it's on there, because that's the profile. But it doesn't, it's not required that I do pave the road immediately. Before I can take it off. You need to take it off the, doc, the document. Because when you put it on there, that means you have to do that. So you want me to remove the 3 inches of pavement from the plan? If you don't want to be held accountable for it, you're not required to. You're going to be limited to seven. I mean, you're, you're going to be limited to seven lots, anyways. Well, right, but I mean, if they you're going to go on seven there, lots, you're, 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 you're too narrow. It's like you need a 20 foot road. So. You know, Paul, yeah, they would generally put it on there because it is a requirement of your road building, but it's not required for me to pave this subdivision road. But if I want to, it needs to be three inches. If you want to pave it, terrific. But take it off your plan. Well, okay. couldn't it be well, done with a note? Well? I wouldn't mind leaving it on there because eventually I will pave it. I don't want to be required to pave it, like this said, before I can get a building permit or, or, an, plan. or an occupancy right. permit. And, but so that's the problem. Plan. You're asking us to approve it. It is on the plan as being paved. Yeah. If we approve that, you have to pave it. So if you don't want to pave it now, you're going to have to take like it off. I wouldn't pave it anyway until after one winter of sitting there. Oh, I, I generally understand what the that. state makes you do, let it sit for one year before you pay. Right. And by this standard, you would have to do it beforehand. No, no. What I'm saying is, if you have it on your plans, this, this is a contract document. Right. So if you've got it on your plans, whether you're required to do it or not, you're saying, I'm going to do this. And you're going to bond for it, and you're going to do the, the, the work. If you don't want to do that, the board needs to know that now, and you need to amend your plan. I would like to take the pavement off. Yeah, I think we just leave the table this until a future date when we get a new set of plans. Why would you do that? Just amend it pending the removal of the pavement. Approve it pending the removal of the pavement. What do you think, guys? I mean, it's not, we, pavement's not one of your subdivision yeah. requirements. We're not looking at subdivisions. Yeah. We're right. looking at private, private, private roads. roads. I, mean, I don't have the problem with that they've got, they've got, they've got a Why can that not be handled with a note on the plan? Right. Right. Just take it off the plan. Take it off the plan. Off the plan. And what you do is you just erase those those notes on that detail that show the paper. Question. If I may. What he is upgrading in what we have the present part of which, which is being 
uh, we brought up to do savage. Okay. Then that section there is was paved. Okay. Is that going to be repaved? Yeah, I'm taking that out. Okay. That we already established a few minutes ago. If they want to pave it, there's nothing that prevents them from paving it. It's not going to change right. anything on there. It's quite, if it's on the plan as a as pavement on the cross section, it's got to be built that way. That's the way it is, guys. Right. And so I just don't want it from the plan. I don't it will be paved deal. one day, but I don't want to be obligated to pave it Before this you do fall all the when I get an occupancy permit. And then that. I wouldn't want to pave it that quick anyway. I would want it to set for a year. You know, it is occurring that not one that must have based to set for you say I would think that you so, Yeah, well, no, you get around it. 600. Yeah, you, you, would, you would have to mend the front piece of fabric and take number six out. Yeah, take it out. Yeah, he's got to mend it. Okay. So, we got a reconsideration of the front piece of fabric for the motion. I'd like to make a motion that item six on the front piece of fabric. Addition to the applicant proposing to exceed the road construction standards of 77D2 by installing 3.5, page 775 of the first contract be removed from the findings of the I'll second that. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to remove the findings of fact number six for the conditions. Uh, no, the findings of fact, sorry. Uh, <laughs> any discussion on it? Where we're removing that, removing and are that. we, so yeah, then we're going to renumber, and then are we <coughs> requiring, we're removing that and then requiring him to take it off the plan? Yeah, requiring a resubmission. He's got to give me a new plan, right, right. right. you, you know, to reflect that in an updated plan. Yeah, Bill's got to give me a, right. a signature page. He's got to put it in this, so these guys can sign my right. way, and you can file. And uh, and also uh, so we just removes it from the cross section. Yeah. And he also needs to put on that note that this will not be a town road. Yeah. So he's got to do that anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay. He can erase it or he can redraw it. Does the board have a problem with that? Because this is this is a standard that's in excess of what's required for seven lots. Yeah, yeah, it's not required. It's not required. It's yeah. 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 Troy wants to no, do that. Term, 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 term. Term. Yeah, the just delete it and put it right. Okay, so let's let's vote on the motion to amend. All those in favor of removing six. I'm opposed. Okay. okay, on to the original motion. I'll, I'll restate that motion to uh, accept the revised finding of facts and conditions for approval. Next. I'm going to second I'll it. Second that, but I think we need to do with the condition that the notes are removed. So, but we're not signing that tonight. So, we're not signing by law tonight. I think when we see that, we can, right? Yes. yes. Well, we we should have it stated somewhere that it, that it should be removed. Otherwise, you come in without. Well, I, I think it's in the minutes, regardless. Because it should be filed in motion. Plans set be amended. Okay. Okay. We'll add that to the motion that the plans be amended to remove the pavement from the, the right. typical cross section. Okay. We also have uh, some powerful information. Uh, performance of conditions that you have to do review the consideration of the original planning law. Right. That has to be amended. So, so the approval has to be with that amendment in there as well. Okay, so, so the motion, I, I don't know that that needs to be part of this motion. Isn't that already done? We just changed the plan. You that. said that's a meeting. Yeah, we said that. So yeah. that's all set. So the motion simply is to approve the revised mm -hmm. findings of fact and conditions 
called Harvard Woods Road. Harvard Woods Road. And to have the map changed. Right. Uh, not the map, the plan. Uh, revised. Uh, revised to reflect. On the new model. Yep. Okay. So, second vote. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Any, any discussion, guys? Yeah, under our conformance with conditional use criteria, yeah. items one and two refer to um, <coughs> exceeding um, the standards at 772, 772, 772, and B, C, and D. There is no requirement. While he meets them, taking those out, he, he meets the standards, he doesn't exceed them. Item number two, okay. essentially, item two says that he exceeds. Right. The strike is right. exceeds. It's just the meat. Okay. So he means it. Two and three. Not one and two. Or two. Number two. two. Yeah, two and three. Number two under the conformance with condition I use criteria. Seven, seven, <coughs> three. The strike and exceed. Anything else, gentlemen? That being a part of the motion. All those in favor of the motion to accept the revised findings of fact uh, and the inclusion on the, on the mylar, uh, the removal of the pavement along with the notes. The motion is unanimous. <coughs> On the agenda is the Ledwood Meadows subdivision preliminary subdivision application. A proposed development of a two lot commercial subdivision and a four lot cluster subdivision on 20.76 acres located at 14 Ledcliff Drive. Tax maps 4, lots 24 and 25B in the CCN and the R4 zone. Philip and Judith Labby are the applicants and Paul Gadboy's PEAB on his agent. You're welcome to stay for the meeting. Yeah. 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 You can't sit that long or I would stay. I've had seven back surgeries. I saw yours today. It looked like it's about ready to come down. Uh, anybody wants to cut the timber coming up? I'm serious. What's that? Yeah. My barn. His barn looks like it's about to come down. Two foot long dairy barn. It's ready to be. Talk to Tom. Uh, have somebody ready to take it for me. Talk to Tom. I'll be talking to you. I'm seriously. I have a need. Thank you again. Okay, on to, why do I think we've seen this before? In an earlier revision. Come on. You're on. Good evening, my name is Paul Gabbard for the record. And, uh, I'm representing Phil Lavin on the subdivision of Vegetable Drive off the uh, Alpha Road. Now, this part did come in front of the board. I think that in 2009 I have the information here that Look at. Um, in my, my recollection, they got final approval subject to uh, the conditions that uh, Phil had supplied the uh, home association that <coughs> the old names docks. Uh, that never took place for one reason or another. So, uh, so there's of course, another got built, another got started. So it's over, been over two years. So obviously, it's uh, no longer the approval is no longer valid, and we're back in front of the board to. Uh, I uh, see the preliminary plan approval this evening, I think, is what we're trying to obtain. So in order to uh, uh, stay ahead of this possible zone change that's coming back after in June. So um, the project was reviewed by Dwight Anderson, I believe, from... Right. Was he from Deluca? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was from Deluca. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the stormwater couch was reviewed by Deluca. Um, I don't have the entire set in front of me, obviously. Um, the last being associated with the uh, nitrate studies for the septic areas. I think I can try to give you a copy of that in your packet of the old information. 
Um, probably required some uh, DEP soil permits, you know, for uh, soil service within so many feet of the stream. We did uh, apply for those. And that was approved. Uh, the party didn't require DEP uh, stormwater permit, but it was a PBR permit for DEP, and we sent that application and also back uh, when we did the project in uh, 2011, I guess. It's not a site location, right? Correct. And it's not a site location and, and or a DEP uh, stormwater permit because we didn't trigger the uh, threshold for an impervious area for the project. So, um, I think, you know, Tad did address some of the outstanding issues. We did have a fire pond that was, uh, that we designed, and of course we had the West Minnesota so just give us the high and low water levels that we use in the termination of the amount of volume required for that pond. Uh, Dwight Anderson did review the design. Uh, I think Tad brought up that we didn't finalize the, uh, uh, the uh, fire suppression system with the fire chief, and we certainly will do that on the next submission. Um, so and obviously we will be uh, working on the condo docks and the road main docks and uh, I'll realize that we have to supply an easement uh, to the fire ponds. We certainly can do that in writing and give the fire department access to that fire pond for repair and maintenance. And the homeless docks actually will be responsible for maintaining the level of the water in the pond. So if something should happen, we have to you know, probably construct a new dry hiding. But they, the city won't be telling them responsible for that. But Town will be responsible for maintaining the fittings in one of the states. So, um, you know, obviously we'll get a cost estimate update for the road. Uh, Phil will be there uh, and supply a, a performance surety as we move forward. So, um, I'm going to answer any questions the board might have, and uh, we're hoping tonight that we can uh, do a preliminary council so we can keep the project, the uh, uh, grandfather project, should sure it's only be changed. So, uh, Paul, as you said, this was before the board in 2010. I believe that's what the date is on the map anyway. Yeah, I did say that. It's been a number of years. At any rate, uh, yeah, uh, uh, what, are there any changes to the project since that time that I, I remember it was thoroughly reviewed at that point? No, we, we haven't made any changes at all as far as plan sets and future changes of the party. We're not planning on changing anything. I don't believe any of the state laws have changed or any of uh, those things haven't changed. Uh, unfortunately, I will have to redo the uh, DEP uh, permit application that expired after two years, so I will have to resubmit the uh, civil service permit applications back to DEP and uh, the PBR for stormwater. I'll have to look at that again. But uh, both can expire. I don't see that being a problem with any future. Bob, you had questions? Yeah, I I come back and I, I come back and forth on the Paul, I, I want to refer to some of your detail sheets with the uh, fire pond dry hydrant yeah. set up. Um we move, move up to what do you title this? Creating storm drain outlet. Uh, this one's showing. This one. Yeah. Yeah. What's the number at the bottom? Of them? Huh? What's the number? Five to sheet five to seven. Yeah. Is it sheet five to seven? I don't know. They didn't plan two. So the middle, the middle one here is the dry hydrant. The same as the one back on the last one. This is stormwater management. Make sure I got the same sheet here. That's what you're telling me. So this is the five, five of eight. Five of eight. This is this is the fire pond. Yeah. Right. And there's this big pond. Let me go over the box. I don't think I have the same. I tried, I so tried this is the fire pond. Fire pond. This is a stormwater storm maintenance pond. Management. And a stormwater management. Storm water management. Storm water management. Storm water management. Storm okay. And this, and this one is the same as we were just showing this one. Correct. Um, I think that was right. nice. This was a permit for the uh, soil disturbance within for DEP. Okay. And we were within it. That's all. Because I, I, I had to construct that pond. I had to be 25 feet away. Uh, for the, I just wanted to. Yep. Yeah. 
I tried to follow them on here. See, and then on, the, on this one, we have just one. And this was the one for the whole plan. So I, I think they're all totally confused. On this. I just wanted to make sure yes. that they, so yep. it is the plan eight that's got oh, all of right. it. Are you you're putting in a fire pond and a tank? No, the, uh, it's a fire pond going in. Well, because I, I, I can see the fire pond over here, but there's a note here that says install fire lane and fire tank at a different location. You've got your fire pond here. Yeah, and you've got a fire tank. I had uh, one day of plot, 12 sets, and different layers were on and off. Okay. So I tried to you know, grab the old file that I had and plot. Uh, so there are going to be a little bit of issue between okay. what we're <laughs> so I, I didn't off. catch that, but that note obviously is not on the Yeah, it, it didn't look right. That's, that's right, right. Okay. exactly. And I'm looking at an old prints that I have here, and I see that what we were going to do with Tango, Cycle of the Pond, but uh, just to get the snapshots all set up, I had to transfer from my old software to my new software. Yeah. And it's really not like pushing a button, unfortunately. It wasn't happy, it didn't you? Uh, no, it just didn't, you know, it's a little bit of a work setting up. Yeah, there's something about setting up new software. No, okay. it's always something. All okay. different things. It's like a little joke. Yeah, I just think, that, I just think, with the, I think there's... So we're yeah, proposing a the bar, get... not the tank. Okay. Yeah, so you have it on the other sheets, too. Yeah, on the other sheet. I mean, I knew there'd be some glitches, and uh, I, I just couldn't. Slacker. Slacker. <laughs> right. Okay, let's, let's just keep in mind that this is a pre-app, so uh, it's pretty detailed for a preliminary submission. Well, remember, well, this is preliminary submission. This is a pre-app. This is a preliminary submission, um, which means that uh, there's a two-step process in submission. Preliminary, which we go over all of the technical details in the final, which is we have a public hearing, it's part of preliminary in the final. Uh, that's when he has to get it all as deep, it's all squared away, things like condo docs, easements, uh, squared away, and so forth. Uh, so uh, this is preliminary, first stage, and uh, then the second stage is final. So preliminary, we have to have a, uh, a public hearing. On. No. It's it's, it's, no, preliminary you have a public hearing, and then it's, and then uh, you can elect whether or not you're going to have a public hearing for the fire. So, that means we have to have a public hearing? No. A public hearing for a preliminary? No. It's not, it's preliminary subdivision. Remember, this is different. We haven't had a subdivision in a long time. But what you're now saying is that we should be having a, a public hearing now. No, no, we're going to have a public hearing for this, but what you do is accept this application as, as a preliminary application tonight. But, Correct. What, but a question along that way, five or six years ago, okay, when it was basically what was approved, I don't think we had a public hearing then for our preliminary. Yeah, you did. The question was whether you were going to have a public hearing again. Yeah. For final, that was what you were doing. Really? I don't remember. Not a limit. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. We've got it now. We're running out of time here. I can't talk that. Yeah. yeah. You, get, you get to be chair next. No, I'm not. Well, I think the. I don't read well, remember? I think, I think the issue now. Well. I think the issue now. We, we don't have to address when we're going to have the public hearing tonight. Tonight, we have to determine whether or not we accept this pre application. And then we have to schedule a site. Preliminary. Preliminary. preliminary, yes. The preliminary application. And then we need to schedule a site. The first site won't be that doesn't come. No. Yeah. No, that was way too much. Yeah. yeah, we got overgrown. Well, we are a mountain goats. I'll make a motion we accept this as a um, preliminary, preliminary application. application. I'll I'll second that. that. The motion's been made and, accept, and seconded to accept this as a preliminary application. Is there any discussion? All those in uh, Bob? Yeah. It's part of it's correct me if I'm wrong here. All of these outstanding issues, he has to have them before fine. Right. We haven't we'll really catch them. and we haven't really gone over them. No. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that yeah, we'll whole process. Yeah. That begins with accepting of this. Okay. 
You're not approving it tonight. No, I understand. No, I understand. <laughs> I, I do understand that, but typically we, we make it very clear this is what we expect at the, the next year. Where this, well, this is a little bit more streamlined, we've already seen it, and it's oh, looks pretty it's thorough yeah. because it's already been done. So. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Yes. And what opposed? No, I am in favor. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Now we need to schedule a site walk. Next planning board Your meeting honor. is June 11th. Uh, if you remember correctly, okay, depends on how far you want to hike. Okay. <laughs> we, could, we could do it on. on well, we can have them build a bridge before that. Walk. <laughs> well, they do that. Pretty dry now. It's not that bad. I'd like to make a motion. We do the sidewalk on. Uh, June 11th at uh, 6 o'clock. It's not like we haven't seen a property before. Well, Jamie has a... Oh, Jamie has a... Okay, motion has been made then. We'll second that. To hold the site walk. The motion has been made and seconded to hold the site walk 6 p.m. June 11th. Any discussion? I don't know if I can make it. It's the day after town meeting. The only, uh, there's no difference on the site from when you walked in before, except <clears throat> the trees are a little bit bigger and the mosquitoes are a lot bigger. <laughs> so a lot we, more we expect, do we expect that to be taken care of? A lot more ticks. The site hasn't been touched. Yeah, a lot more ticks still. Uh, a lot more ticks still this year, for sure. Yeah, there's a few more. I don't understand. I would have thought we would have put them somewhere down by Oh, yeah. You have thought so. Okay. So the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Like I said, I don't know okay. okay. Just make it for the regular meeting. Remember, we have a hearing that night, too. We have a big hearing that night. We got a hearing going that night, too? Yes. Yes, we have a bias hearing. We have a bias hearing. hearing. No. Is, is, yeah, okay. Okay. Hopefully we can. Bill, we'll look forward to seeing you in two weeks out at the property. And you, and then you can come join us for the meeting. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So, so irregardless of what happened that time, I just want to be sure. His, his application is under review and has been seen by the board. He's fine. He's fine. No matter what happened. Yes, he's what under substantive happened. review at this time. I think my interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that. Assuming that he ARD passes. If they are passes, it's, it's a new point. But if, they, if it doesn't pass, it's a new well, yeah, if it passes, but if it passes, he's covered. He's safe. See why be? Well, that's, I just want to pretty much on his side. The man, that works well. well for anybody, I don't care how we do that. We're concerned to make sure we're not postponing it. He was allowed in that zone too. Yeah, he's under substance. Under conditions. Okay, what? Good for that. I don't believe that. No, but that's why he's here now to make sure. Yeah, I'm just saying under the old. We didn't change it when they except extending it farther down. Oh yeah, the we changed uses. Yeah. Just to remind the board, uh, the uh, the comp plan committee were put in the standard that there will be no more residential subdivisions. Yeah, right. In that list, except for those that are exempt conditions, family or five year. Yeah, so that's that affects all properties. When that's right. He's not going to have anybody. That's going to be for uh, 55 and older. Is that Next. right? The condos are 55 and older. They're going to be Next making up. license plates on the front. No, I'm just asking you. 55 and older. Yeah. Okay. Let's move, on to the, let's move on to the next item. One joy subdivision. Subdivision free application. Proposed development of a three lot residential cluster subdivision and construction of an 800 linear foot plus or minus private way serving four lots on 6.21 acres located at 295 Limerick Road, tax map 28, lot 6 in the R1 and R4 zones. Peter Lovejoy is the owner applicant and Paul Gadbury is the owner's agent. 
Good evening, my name is Paul Gadboy, the day for the record. Um, the applicants are here this evening, Peter and Elizabeth, uh, owners of the property. Uh, if you have any questions, they might be in some of the questions the board might have. I think the board did see this project in the past, as they referred to that. Uh, sounds like it came in front of the board uh, a couple of times, or three separate occasions, I guess. Um, so I think at that time, I can't remember if it was uh, six new laws proposed, um, but I don't really remember exactly sketch plan look like anymore. So uh, Peter Hyde might cooperate my coming to uh, see what he can do with this site. Uh, in turn, he also hired Mark Andrews to redo the wetlands. They worked on it previously uh, several years ago. However, there's no documentation as to uh, how they were located or any way that I can use that information. So we had it redone. Um, so I can calculate some net density requirements to figure out just how many lots this project might be able to uh, 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 have. Um, DDP has been up to the site. Originally, the project, or at, at the current time, the project has uh, it, it's three lots. Um, it's a lot that has a created by the state lot that has a 50 foot wide easement. Uh, I'm actually only fee 50 foot wide uh, right away only fee. And this right away turns back 50 feet wide to uh, a lot that I call lot two. That was created by the state lot. Um, and then lot uh, one is actually runs along this dashed uh, 50 foot right away only fee by lot one. And then it's along lot one, and then around this lot now on my Gorham, Gorham, uh, Carrington Gorham. So that defines <coughs> lot one. And, and so what we're, we're developing is the main lane called uh, lot three, which I subdivided, subdivided the lot A, B, and C. Um, so lot one exists, lot two exists, with a D reference, with a D reference. And the remaining land on the original deed would be lot three, which I'm in turn subdividing in lot A, B, and C. Um, so originally, when I was trying to put this pack together for DEP, um, you know, the applicant wanted to construct a roadway in within the existing 54 right of way that uh, lot two owns, which is again uh, Peter and Elizabeth. Um, so they could actually convey rights to do that. Uh, however, that was a wetland impact that was greater than 15,000 square feet and that would push us into a tier 2 or wetland permit process for DEP and uh, not something that would be very viable because you've got to pay the year, you know, mitigation fees. So, and then, then that would and that would have given us four lots because obviously I would have had some more upland area to uh, use for net density. That would have given us the fourth lot had we been able to actually permit that. That you know proves to be not viable, so I come up with an alternative uh, where I actually pushed the road over, narrowed the wetland crossing, actually came into an upland, then another wetland crossing here to basically the same cul de sac area that I would have had for, for the four lots. DEP came out to the site, reviewed the wetland delineation that was performed on Mark Hampton, found that Mark Hampton was actually a little bit more conservative than uh, she probably needed to be. And uh, she was acceptable to his wedding delineation. And I know Mark Anthony yeah. usually pushes the envelope because he gets, <laughs> you know, not right or wrong, it's just. It's smart. You guys are. Um, so uh, I think her name was Lisa now, or I can't actually remember her name. But she, yeah, she, she, did, she did come out to a uh, former sidewalk, we actually took her down this area, and she actually did find that Mark Mrs. Small was up in right here. See, it is going to save us a little bit of money, so I went back and I located this upland. So, actually, this little shade area is not going to be wetland filled because this is a portion of upland. So, <coughs> she said that that would be great, that will make your numbers even smaller. So, she was fine with that. Uh, I, I think that she kind of thought the upland actually was even further back and I had less upland filled. But again, this is what Mark Angel flag, and that's what I located. So, that's what we use for the calculations. Um, so I think, you know, the EPC seemed to be okay with us moving forward for the uh, wetland fill application. I have not done that because I'm kind of estimating the 70, 20 square feet, and I'm estimating the 3,500 square feet. I don't really get exact numbers until I actually do a planning profile and actually create the 2 to 1 slopes and I can really calculate what we have to fill. So, but I mean, I think that's 
your home pretty good accurate. Less than three feet high for the road and two months low, so that's gonna change, but I don't think it'll change a whole lot. It'll push me into the two. But right now I'm at setting two hundred plus, you know, I'm at the ten thousand, so um, I'm well over fifteen thousand square feet, so I don't see that's gonna be an issue. Um, the wet, you know, and then we're at the point where this project is six point two one acres. I believe it's six acres you have to cluster. Yeah. Right? That's uh, four lots. Six acres and four lots. Do I have to cluster? Oh, I guess I don't remember that portion of the cluster. Oh, you're, you're clustering it, though. You're clustering it. Right? Well, I guess I, want, I guess I want to talk about that. You got it. Do I have to cluster this? Because was, I'll tell you. So, Ted, you said the criteria is six acres and four lots? Yeah. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's not find that in eight. Yeah. And again, if you wait until after town meeting, you may not be required to. Why? Well, we didn't change, change that, right? We didn't change that. Change that to what? Ten acres? No. No, you guys didn't want to change it, so we didn't. Why not? We discussed it. You discussed it. You discussed it, you discussed it and decided not to proceed. And you didn't do it. Oh, I thought we did. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, we said that it wasn't. Was there a public hearing? Was it going to be mandatory? Was it in the public hearing? No. You know, this is this we, we didn't have the discussion about whether it was mandatory. Right? No, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but we never got around to doing it. We didn't get around to doing it. So. Yes. Although there's always next year. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go again. Round and round. Cluster eight four. So those of you who want to refer to your, uh, your uh, zoning ordinance, it's eight four, which is cluster development plan unit development. Uh, let's see. Basic requirements. Cluster plan units shall meet the following criteria. Minimum land area for cluster plan unit development shall be six acres. And that's the standard, but then when we go over to, to the section that I call Bob's booby traps, which are over on Section 6.3, um, you will find that all residential subdivisions of more than four lots shall be clustered in accordance to Section 8.4. And, and it isn't an 8.4 that says that we have to, for, since you've asked and since Paul, you're asking. Yeah. I think the board has to take into consideration not only the lot you're established, but the lot that already is. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, so even if you were trying to adjust, I think you might run into problems. So yeah, I, I'm just trying to help you answer here. So, you know, well, why do we have to consider that? Because I've been involved in subdivision. Well, that's a good point. The these these, are, these, have, are, these taken, lots are, these lots are, are, are taken out of the equation, we'll say, because we'll they've been sold. Right. Made. And we've looked no at longer part of the review process. Yeah. You're right. I think that's the more big one. You know, like it, 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 you come as a lot, though, to what triggers subdivision. Because you don't have to come. So if I was going to do two lots here, I can't because these this lot here was created within the five year period. So yeah, I got this one, I got that one. Right. So the third exactly. lot, the third lot, you know. Yeah, so you still have to count them, you know, yeah. as when you trigger your subdivision. But once they've been conveyed, I don't believe that they're, they're not part of the package anymore. There's not yeah. something we're going to be looking at. Yeah, well, that's that, my thoughts. On. No, but the consideration has to be: uh, do they, is it within that five-year period? Is it to be considered? Count as a lot. Yeah, but not count as part of the subdivision. Right, because it's been more than five years. No, no, it's only been two. Well, oh, yeah. uh, there, there are two deeded lots. All right. What, what, all the developed here or the, uh, the proposed area? Was that part of lot one or two? Or was it a third? Lot one. Okay, the needed lot one 
comes right down the edge of this 50 foot action strip, and then down here, mm -hmm. okay? And then back to the road. That's one. Yeah. Lot two owns this 50 foot wide strip, okay? And owns this 50 foot wide strip, and is this area right here, okay? And so where's the rest of the land? So, what's so the rest of the land, land is from here over. That's the rest of the property. Is that a separate deeded lot? Well, that well, it's a, in fact his remaining land. Right. But okay. Remaining land. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be deed. It's still owned by Peter. But what? But whose deed is? I mean, what? What's the deed? The original. Is a separate deed. The original yeah. deed. It hasn't changed. So uh, these lots and files, we don't even have this on. So the original deed it was uh, back in ten two twenty six page three twenty three. That's when Peter bought it. Okay. Right. And then since then, he's conveyed uh, lot one, which is filed in book 16892. He's conveyed lot two, which is filed in book 16892 again. And they were and just both created within the past year. Correct. That year, September 18, 2014, and uh, September 18, 2014, they were both created about on the same day. That's that makes it, yeah. It's, yeah, you got to close this up. So, all right, so we got to close this up. <laughs> How are you going to close this up? It's actually to your benefit. It's actually already a good thing. Well, actually, you know, it's, it's, so you got it's, three. It's, 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 so we're talking about, we're talking about uh, uh, one eight watt size. It's pretty hard to do uh, a cluster vision when you have a one eight watt size. No. I mean, you know. But you if, you have, if you had a five acre lot size and you, you know, or six acres obviously you wouldn't work, right? You can't go much lower than one acre to get a well in separate. Man, but pretty high to get lower than an acre to do that. But depends on the soil. Three acres is something, but three acre lot size, and that doesn't work really well if you're using a six acre minimum. So something's not quite, I think, right with the way things you guys are trying to do it. But anyway, in this case, that's what it is. It's a one acre requirement. So, you know, I am going to, because, uh, you know, right now, this lot line for lot A is going to be right up to the 25 foot buffer line. Lot B is going to own the 25 foot buffer line, and lot C will own the 25 foot buffer line, because I have to maintain 25 foot buffer as part of the cluster requirement on the outskirts of the project. So, and that's fine. I mean, it's just, it's just hard to do the cluster subdivision. So, lot A is really 31,000 square feet, lot B is 35,000 square feet, and lot C is 30,000 square feet, up to the 25 foot second point. Again, road frontage, you know, is 200 feet. Um, you know, on a power stack, it's uh, actually 75 feet. So, I have uh, I have 50 feet here, and I have 50, uh, 65. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I have 51 feet here, and I have. 196 feet here, which is probably around, but <coughs> So, I guess for the frontage requirement, the cost of subdivision is helping us out here for frontage. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So, the whole thing. So, we are going to be proceeding with the cost of subdivision. I just wanted to see if that was absolutely mandatory, because I could revise some of the lots to make them one acre each on uh, not just the cluster. Um, having said that, I know that Tad mentioned the cost of subdivision that. Normally, it's required as they will have uh, nitro studies completed on the project. Well, you just answered yourself. It's tough to give sentences in the well, so lot the size. Right? So, you know, we'll have to have let you do that as part of the requirements. But what could have made you watch one acre in size and not left it, which really would look like almost the same plan. Right? So, um, I guess we're looking for. Some sort of comments from the board, see if they're okay with the application. I did do the density requirements. You know, we have the R1, and besides the majority in R1, they were a little bit average in the R4 zone. Yeah. You know, so in the R4 zone, I'd get like 0 0.09 units. You know, in the R1 zone, I'd get 3.45 units. Um, you know, you just take the total area of the parcel, take away the wetlands from the parcel, take away the uh, 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 plant, uh, take away the uh, right away from the parcel. Probably net up in the area, 108,000 square feet. 
divide that by the density of, you know, for one eight minimum, I come up with 3.45 watts. So, you can meet the density requirements, um, and uh, I think we're going to meet the DP requirements as far as getting the wetland filter. I don't see a problem with that. Um, and I guess I'll stop there and answer any questions that the board might have. There's still the requirement in there for open space? There is a requirement for open space that 25 foot buffer will be an open area so that people can actually use that. They'll be in common with the association. There will be open space in here. There will be some open space, obviously, throughout here. Um, and obviously, open space on this area here with stop land. It's still open space here. Not a lot of uh, usable open space because, again, it's a small site, right? It's Is that open right space? We're going to set aside a good open space plan. Well, what you were talking about the possibility of doing one acre lots. What? How different would this look if you had one acre lots? Well, if I had one acre lots, I'd have to meet the uh, front of the on the call side of 75 feet, which, you know, I, I think I got, 60, I got 51 here and I probably have 50. So I have to, I can move this line out now with a wetland edge. I can get a little more frontage here. I can readjust this lot line over, get a little bit more frontage here so I can obtain the frontage required on the cul de sac and the frontage required. Then when, you, when I extend this lot line, could actually come part of the edge of the wetland, extend out to the rear property line. I can get, I actually have over three acres of good upland dairy in here. I did my calculation so I can get three one acre lots. It would be not practically the same plan. It would be practically the same plan. The clutch you actually required to have less than, than one acre. What, what uh, that's right. right. So I think you're already there. Which, which, one, well, which one makes more sense since it's so I like this. The issue is if I have to clutch it, then I... But does it make more sense? Just forget the, the ordinance for the minute. Okay. Right. Does it make more sense to do one acre than the sub one acre, or does it really matter when you're on the ground doing it? Pros and cons. I tell you, the con is if I can have this as a, a regular subdivision, one acre lot size, doesn't trigger nitrate studies, which I'm I'm sure there's going to be an issue with nitrate studies. I mean, all the times I've ever seen this happen as far as the plumes were septic. Uh, I, I've never seen a problem where it really travels on that people's property. So if I had the one acre lot size, it wouldn't trigger that. It wouldn't trigger, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. You know? well, well, right. 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 That's right, exactly right. But it wouldn't be mandatory, that's right. Um, so, so even practically, there's not much difference. Not much different, except I guess you wouldn't have open space. Uh, yeah. Or any open space free. land, it would be owned by the lots. You know, this lot now would probably own I mean, this entire area, right? It's, you know, and then this lot would probably own this entire area, and it wouldn't be an open space plan. There's so little of it anyway. Not very practical. I know in Saco, you know, they had open space. But they had 20 acres. But they'll look at sites if it's less than 20 acres, or they even determine that we'll take a feed instead of open space land. Because sometimes the open space land isn't very wide for those people. So they'll say, instead of you having open space, we want you to give us a feed. They take that feed and they'll apply it to ball fields or other places that make sense to have the open space or put a ball field somewhere. So it's not very usable open space. I don't think it matters to us either way for the I just wanted to bring it up. You indicated that there were two lots that were created on yeah. September 8th of 2014. That's when the deeds that were one recorded. And that one. Correct. This can one you, was done in 2009. Can you help me to understand how those two lots being created nine months ago and, the, and putting in another three lots does not violate the five-year subdivision? I'm missing something. I know I am. Okay, so say that again. <laughs> it is a subdivision. No, it's yeah, a subdivision. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out those 
creating those yeah, two mind. created the subdivision, what you're saying, because you ended up with three lots, those two and one other one. You're on the right. I'm going to do the, the original survey plot. Uh, my understanding is state law says if you have a residence and you, I think that's the law he was using, then even five years you're allowed to cut two lots out. <coughs> you wait four years old. So, this residence, so it was a, an entire parcel, and he was allowed, I believe that's a lawyer, took care of, to carve out this lot and then the remaining land. So he carved out two lots out of the parcel. And this was well, the original and carved out two, however you want to look at it. Or the original carved out two, right? Because he created that one, and by creating this one, he created the remaining right. land, right? I'm confused. Me too. Okay, okay. Just... How long have you lived in the in the house? And I know it's more than, than nine months. Yeah, like 17 okay. years. Okay. Is it all one piece of land originally? Mm -hmm. Until when? And you, you sold off the piece in the front. Yeah, that was. Yeah, okay, that was, five, that, was, that, was, that was in 2009 you sold yeah. that piece. So that's gone past the five year period. Because, you know, obviously it was September 1st, 2009, you know, September 18, 2014, more than five years by like, the lawyer figured out, <laughs> 17 days, right? <laughs> and that's the exact deeds that I picked up at the registry, and that's when they were recorded. So, yeah, so five was, years, somebody was watching that very closely. I don't know if it was Peter or the lawyer. Yeah, the third. Yeah, the third. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was watching that very closely. So that's the second one. How about this shirt? I, I, okay, so, so right now, this was this doesn't count. Peter owns all the property. But the five-year period, but the five-year period is this, right? Oh, he still owns. This is gone because it's been more than okay. five years. Don't count it. Okay, I thought you said there were two lots there that were sold. No, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you conveyed these two and you kept the remaining land. Why you make them? The garage is one lot. Huh? The and the house is another. Why did you make it two lots? My shop's on one. Yeah, but it was originally all one. Correct. Just the house and the I garage. Just, so later on when I retire, I, I can separate that my shop as another lot. Some landscaper or something wanted to buy it. It's just almost three acres. Okay. Uh, I was just... Yeah, I didn't understand why. That's why... You know, just figure it with more down the road. But, but we're considering the yeah, subdivision of five yeah, lots. Yeah, it's still, six right. lots. It's still five a five lot. Because five 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 you're real one. You're real one. Yeah, you have to count these as lots, but they just took place nine months ago. Five. Nine months ago. So you got to include them, but they're less than five years. So lot one and lot two. Okay. So now if he subdivides any more of his lot three, he's got trigger subdivision. Yeah, so we've got a five lot subdivision. So if you would have done like two lots, he would trigger subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta count the previous ones. Yeah. If you just call this all one lot and leave it alone, then you can sell it all one lot and that wouldn't have done anything. But you may create the second lot in this one now. I think we're confused. I I knew a new rule where you can create two lots. Yeah, the stat, state statutes say that if you own, live in a piece of property for more than five years, you're allowed to get two splits every five years. You've got to be one, 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 one split every year. Two if you're residing on a piece of property. Yeah, I don't know why. And that, yeah, but you know, then you, when you do that, don't have that part of the state law says that you have to hold it. State law that says you're allowed to do two kinds of one. So I've always known about one. Yeah. Yeah. I, matter of fact, I waited five I've done, I've done that. Yeah. I've done this a few times for on other projects. Farms, especially farms. And that's pretty much why I did it. The farmer that has 100, you can't do women to the farm. The farm that has 100 acres, he's been living there every five years, you can get two. Wait for another five years, you can get two more. 
Another five years, two more. Well, I think it's a cut that creates two lots. No, it's about two new lots. Um, 99.99% sure of that one. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I got it. A couple so times. the definition well, of subdivision. Yeah, yeah. 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 It starts I've out. I've got in, 75 in a division or a zone, too. Okay, okay. okay. So the definition of okay. subdivision is a division of a parcel of land into three or more lots within a five-year okay. period. Right. Correct. So he's done the the 2009 lot is out of the equation because right. right. it was outside of five-year period. He did. He did three lots last year. Oh, so yeah, the, the, with the remaining open space. Yeah, he yeah, created so three lots last year, so we that's correct. should have seen it last year. And, and but and unless there's an correct, exemption for, for the, the, the piece of prop, piece of the, the where his house. Is. I think there was an exemption, wasn't there? Yeah. Did you have an exemption? You gave it to. You. I thought there was an exemption. Yeah, I think he gave he it, to it to me because I'm the wife. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where the exemption was. Yeah. So it was a subdivision, but the exemption <laughs> it was an exempted <laughs> lot. Because Nobody it was created to a family. State well, that's what the last one has to Yeah, because yeah. it's only one. Okay. Okay. Well, I knew well, 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 there was something there. I'm trying to go over the second. I want to talk this. I want to talk this. Five years. Okay. Use that and the relative exemption. And the only thing uh, with that relative exemption, I'm not part of it, I think you have to hold yes. on to the five years before you know, sell it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Or you go through seven. Yeah. You, you go through seven. If you have an exempted lot, I'm good. Of course, you're not going to give Peter the, the house. He can have the garage. He's yeah. right. 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 out there right. anyway. I do family law for a living, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. 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 That's all right, so that's what Dan did. Okay. Five years and 17 days after that one was sold, basically. Well, that, that answers my right. question because I was trying to figure out how we could do that. <laughs> but there is the, the original exemption when you have two laws of the five years if you decide on the problem. I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, bring it in next time. Yeah, I'd really like to see it. The division of yeah. land of the Because food. guess what? It would have could apply for parker even beforehand mm -hmm. if we wanted it to. I don't right. think that, but, but he's not your client, so it's not. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think I'm just saying that. <laughs> oh, I agree. I'd really like to see it. Well, I did project in paper. It was a farm, and of course, the lawyer reviewed it, her lawyer reviewed it, and you know, the buyer's lawyer reviewed it, and yeah, it's in the same statute. But what I can, from, from my experience in this, is that this this topic has specifically been gone through a lot of debate, debate is a differently interpreted in different towns yep. in that the two lots are considered two lots and the remaining land is not considered a lot in a lot of people's interpretation just telling you what i know okay okay that's true and it, and it goes the opposite way so right your remaining same lot is a lot is a lot and that same thing would would trigger subdivision <laughs> by a lot of code enforcement officers so it's it's Unfortunately, not a, has not been a, a black and white issue. The legislature has made it more confusing. Of course they have. It's sort of like, what do you want? That's okay. 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 All right, well, let's, so, let's move on to what, what's the next step? The next step is We're going to have to set up a sidewalk yeah. at some point. Yeah. First, we have to. You memorize the walk right. uh, to right. the memorize. Which time? Yeah, we walked it, what, twice? Yeah. I, I did once. Yeah. We did once. We walked it twice. I walked it at least twice. Yeah. But we have board members who have. What happens to John Toothing was running that for us and he passed away? Right. That, uh, that was two Man. years ago. Yeah. yeah. That's been since I've, I was I've, on the board. Pete, I snowmobiled it, does that count? Right. <laughs> yeah, we're behind that, so. But that's when it started. That we started this three years ago. Yeah. Keith mm -hmm. Virgie took me out to his house one year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a public hearing? Uh, so yes. Yeah. Is, is this an application? It's a pre-app. Oh, this is a pre-app. It's a pre-app. Pre okay. So, okay. We still have to accept the pre-app, right? So, I move we accept the pre-application. Yes. Well, then the fan has discussed. Okay. I'll second that. The motion's been made and seconded to accept the pre-application. Discussion. I need help knowing the difference between a pre-app and a pre-app. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
Oh yeah, we have seeds and preliminary. So this will eventually need to yeah, come back up to a preliminary. Yeah. Okay. What, what, well, what you want to do in this situation okay. is you're required, the only thing you're required to do is have the site But what you're doing here is you're, you're going over the concept. We go out, we take a look at this, we look at this in the field, we go over the concept of the cluster. Whether this works, whether you want something else, that's what we do. This is a different design than we had the last time. So and we've done that twice. Yeah, we have six houses on it. Yeah. And, and, and each time we go out there, you see something new. So how, how come, how no come yeah. for Phil's we didn't have to accept that as a pre -app. Because he didn't submit as a pre -app. You don't have to do pre -app. He's, he's come in. They, 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 they come, come in, in pre -app because from the board. Right. So they're asking, choice. looking for guidance. Right. Well, they they spend a lot of Phil already did the pre -app. Yeah. They come in they're and already make sure we can a buy-in on the general idea of the subject. All right, the engineering. He hasn't got any engineering on this. It's just part of Thank you. How much further down is the, the road going in from where it was before? Uh, it's a low screw. Actually, I think it's less. A it's closer than before. Before it was old, my friend went out there. I think when uh, John had it. Yeah, he had it there. And it, and it, it came right there close over this way. But he had six watts in here. He did, I, I remember. And, and Paul went over and this just didn't make any sense. It was too much. And, much of a cluster and one of the lots bigger. The only, th the only thing I would say going out there, please mark where the things are. The two times I have been out there, we've had difficulty finding pins for corners. We didn't know where property lines were. We didn't know where the roads were. We had an idea of where the road was out to the street. Yeah. We're going to spend our time again John. going yeah. out. I want to know. I've already tried to call the SAC and the private lines because I want to make sure when test pits would be located. And it's kind of second line so that we can actually get site distances yeah. and all the rest. This is actually pretty easy kind of to walk it because the upland, but I mean, I can, okay. this is very simple to figure out where it is because I have my stations on my plan so I can walk them pretty down close. But yeah, because when we went around that mountain, we didn't, we the didn't get no idea very, what very we were on and where it was. Uh, one question also out there, if I remember correctly, where is that tree? There was a tree that we had a question about site is. Not that tree, the other tree. That's the other tree. The tree. The tree. <laughs> out by the front road. By out near the front road, the site distance. We did from the other from the other driveway. Oh, yeah. I just right yeah. I think it was down towards where that road is now. Is there, a, is there a little bit of a curve yeah, up there? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Now, we're coming up. Yeah, there, yeah. You see yeah. and there was one. It's there. Like a you got a good memory. Yeah. yeah very good memory. I forgot about that. I knew what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 When that road was here, Yeah. it was like a tree. And there was a tree that walked yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right the curve, and we didn't know where to That was a kind of curve like this. Right, because there was something there, because I thought your lot was square. It didn't have a little cutoff like that. Right. Because I thought the tree was on somebody else's property. Right, because he's only got up. Yeah, we'll look at it. I don't even know that. We'll look so, at it. So we'll see the, um, look, let's, I, we, we've we've got a motion, it. and we've got a second to accept this as a pre app. Pre app. Pre app. That's the app meeting if they're satisfied with our review. They're going to ask for our opinion, but I'll look at it. Well, yeah, we usually render that after we go out this site. Oh, I don't know. Conclusion, Gerald, like that. But the Gerald consensus, he seems to need all of the collectors of the division requirements yeah. and the plan. Um, yeah, if we can get out there and verify things like site distances. Some of the soils that we, I don't know if it came across, but the board almost always asks for the groundwater assessment. And yeah. Um, so I have nothing later on that would be except that I know Dad said that it's the discretion but we generally have to depends on what your site walk is it the later boots or what boots they got it all those in favor okay no opposed now we need to schedule a site walk okay. 
can be on the same day. It can't be on the 11th. The 25th is the earliest we can get out there. Well, that's if you hold it on. We could hold it on another night. Is there any real plans to move forward? I mean, we've how fast. We've yeah. Been, yeah, I mean, if there's no real plans, we can post, postpone it, give you plenty of time to mark it off and the rest. But if you're really looking to try to get started, is that? And then, I have told that before. I and know that. Told that before. I, I have. I mean, John, I'm anxious. I lost a couple of years there with him. I paid the money. I'm not, I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm just I like asking moving. what your plan though. I was hoping to get that road in this summer. May. Oh, as far as my plan. You've got it all separate. I'll be ready for whenever they want. Okay. okay. I'm agreeable to any day. Yeah. Um, that doesn't bone me. Yeah, the 25th. I'm not going to be available, available a week after, what is it, the 11th? So it's like the week of the 15th. Yeah, yeah. So we could have a meeting that week. Not in, but in, just in case somebody was looking to schedule one. Uh, it looks like the 25th is probably the first thing. Yeah. Somebody yeah. make a motion? Just because you're on vacation all summer, it doesn't mean it. To me, yeah, some of us have to work. If I remember correctly, there's just as many mosquitoes on that lot as on the fields, and we don't have that much blood to give. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, so Phil's is dry, uh, less because it's not so highly wet. So the 25th? 25th? 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock? Somebody make a motion? Make a motion. Yeah. Make a motion to have the sidewalk on June 25th at 6 o'clock. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded for sidewalk June 25th at 6 p.m. All those in favor? All right, thank you. Motion to announce. Plan is report. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. 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 <laughs> and if we hold, if we hold our public hearing, we certainly Are we going to have a report? Nothing to report except the selectmen have accepted our uh, have uh, posted the warrant for the uh, basically for our uh, reward for the uh, town meeting. So we're all squared away on that. And, uh, I would recommend that come on out Wednesday night to uh, defend our. Uh, because uh, we, we have 14, we have, we have what, we have uh, 14 warrants at that meeting, which were out early. Are they listing them as 14 or are they listing them the way we had them? Are they listing 18? They're listing them as they were submitted by the supply board. Are they 18 or 14? I think there's 14. I'm just curious because I know the public carries up. Yeah. They're all the exact same way they're going to perform. Uh, point of interest? Yeah. Point of interest? Yep. We lost another business in the Rundle. Which one? Enterprise. Yeah. Gone. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. No, they moved right. better. Oh. Yeah, they moved down to uh, better, right? Okay. All right, let's break it down. Can I vote? John, go change that. Why for? All right, so thank you. Oh, no.
I, th I, I just thought you might have an idea. No, I just thought it was gone. Yeah, of course. It's just such a remote location. It's, it's, yeah, Enterprise is it's one of those places that's you know, you're located on Route 1 in the Rumble. Yeah. There's nothing around here that would cause you to go rent a car. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, yes. They, hey, let's put it this way. They used to run out of cars there. Did they? I used oh, to yes. Huh. Because the fact is, if, if uh, yeah, they, they run out of cars. They even turn around and used to have to have the cycle to bring cars out. See, because I know in, in your case, if I take my car to a dealership, that dealership doesn't give me a loan of cars, I don't go back to that dealership. That's part of part of the reason why I buy cars where I do. I bring it in for service, I get a loan of cars. Right. Okay. Anything else? There is nothing else to report. Um, Jack, uh, Jack's net last day is tomorrow. Uh, in on, he has uh, been appointed as the uh, permanent um, superintendent of the Andover school system. We're doing putting in 45 days a year. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we really thank Jack. Jack was a great interim manager. He did a lot of uh, good things. Um, let's see. Uh, in terms of, uh, he will still be around. He's going to. He will be around for the uh, uh, to, as a resource to keep. We'll be starting on Monday, uh, so we have a new town manager Monday, and there'll be a meeting. There'll be meeting with the selectmen that evening. Um, other things that we have to report. Uh, when does new town manager start training? He starts training Monday. What's his uh, name? Keith. 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 What? Uh. Keith T. Okay. Mr. T. Mr. T. Yeah. Trefton. And uh, so he, that he's going to be starting with a bang immediately with a uh, <laughs> uh, council meeting. Uh, meeting. And um, Jack will, will be available and come in on an as need basis rather than giving him a big blurb for two hours and all the things that need to be done when he's going to be on an on call basis. So Jack will still be around. Um, and he did a great job. He was, he was terrific. Um, but you know, Keith's got a lot of things on his plate. Uh, any other planning things? No. We have. Uh, you know, you want to know where we stand on some of the FOIs, FOAs that you folks have participated in? English. Freedom of information demands. That all right. Made. Those requests, uh, I believe, I think almost all of them have been fulfilled. They've been, several have been picked up. Uh, you were supposed to mail us out to the, the email back to you. Never got it. Wait, for which issue? FO, FOA or FOEs or anything. I think all the FOs were. Well, that was two weeks ago, whenever you were supposed to. I think all the F, that was that was in regard to contact with federal, uh, state, or uh, state agencies. I don't believe anyone here said they had any contact with any state agencies. That was regarding DEP and Department of Agriculture. I never sent you anything because I never got anything. Nobody, no, so you folks indicated that nobody had had any contact. So that was the last one that we've gotten so far. Yeah. So that's why you, you haven't gotten anything more because there was no, there was no, no contact between the board uh, members. And we certainly, I know I had no contact with, with you folks in regards to that. I had nothing on my. I gave nothing either. So um, that that May, May 12th FOA and nothing. So uh, there's been no other ones that have been submitted except, you know, in addition to the ones that you guys have already received. So um, what <coughs> has been what has been uh, um, requested, we have provided the information on. What we have, in many cases we have very little. So he's all cottages and chugging along. We'll have another drawdown meeting uh, the second week of next next month. They're doing great. Okay, cooking along. Um, and that's all I've got right now. Point of information. Blue Moon, formerly Maddie's or whatever else that. Yep. It's going to be supposedly future restaurant again. Yep. Oh. 
are you, you ask me to find things and I, yeah. no, when nobody else knows anything, so might as well. Well, they've been working at it. They have, they've had permits for a while. They've been working at it for quite a while now. They have it. It's a permitted use. They have more than enough parking for the number of seats they're going to be having. It's not going to be coming to you guys. Uh, they're not even going to come to staff because they, they have no need to. They've got all the stuff they need there. It all depends on, on what their factors are. I mean, they've got uh, their, their program is still in the and it may expand with time. And they, you may be, they may be coming to you at some point if they have uh, an expansion of the program that requires more parking. I mean, parking's been a problem with the issue. Uh, but they have a lot of parking right now. So. Like around the building. Like well, around the building is an issue. That's going to be an issue. Um, because that's where there's, there may or may not be a part of safety. All right. Who would you adjourn? I would encourage everybody to be here on the 11th. We're going to have two rather important meetings to deal with. The first one is bias, and the second one, we need to determine the completeness of an application. And this must have died. Oh, no. I didn't stop it.